Well, we're ready to move on to our fourth and final pillar of the Catholic faith, and that is prayer. And you know that the key to any successful relationship is ongoing, open communication, talking and listening. Well, the fourth pillar of our Catholic faith, prayer, is absolutely crucial for understanding a year of faith. You see, we're not just professing faith in an institution or in a set of ideas. We're professing faith in a person, Jesus Christ, with whom each of us is invited to have an intimate relationship. And in order for that relationship to be vibrant, it's going to need communication, talking and listening. We call that prayer. So the first thing that I encourage you to do to get ready to teach during the year of faith is to pay attention to your own prayer life. And in particular, make prayer a part of your preparation for planning your lessons. The Finding God program that I've referred to a few times begins its catechist planning and preparation pages for each chapter with a prayer called the three-minute retreat, which gives you an opportunity to ensure that your planning is taking place within a context of prayer. And, of course, for those of you who are not using the Finding God program, the three-minute retreat is also available online at www.loyalopress.com. Now, the general directory for catechesis tells us that the most effective catechesis takes place within a climate of prayer. And you can create a climate of prayer from the first moment the young people are entering your space by doing three simple things. The first I already mentioned to you. Greet them at the door or have an aid. Greet them at the door holding a bowl of holy water, inviting them to bless themselves as they enter, just as they do when they enter a church. It's an immediate sign of a reminder of our baptism, and it is a very subtle but powerful call to prayer. Another thing you can do, have some music playing in the background as the young people are entering your space. Have some liturgical music or some instrumental music, something that they would recognize from church. And then third, have them immediately sit down and write out their prayer intention for that day. Something they're grateful for or someone or something they would like to pray for. And then you can either collect those intentions and place them on your prayer table uh, for them to select and to read during your opening prayer. Or they can hold on to them and read their own intentions during the prayer. But all three of these things can be done with great simplicity but can go a long way in establishing a very prayerful environment for your entire session. Now, this next one can be a little bit tricky, depending on where it is that you teach. But if at all possible, do what you can to transform your space from something that looks and feels like a classroom to something that looks and feels more prayerful. Now, if you've been with me on other webinars, you may have seen this picture before. Uh, I've used it also on my blog. It's a room that I taught in a few years ago. It was, it's the science room of the Catholic school. And I would get there early enough to move around the tables and chairs and create this simple setting with the prayer table at the center as the main focus. Now, the reason I said this can be tricky is because this classroom belongs to the science teacher in the Catholic school. And so we're sharing that space with someone else, and that person is usually going to great lengths to keep a room set up as he or she wants so that you know, we really owe it to them to put things back the way they were before we came in. And the most single, most important thing that you can do to establish a climate of prayer in your learning space is to invite those you teach into an experience of reflective prayer. And this could be anywhere from three or four minutes for little ones to 10 to 15 minutes for junior high or high school or adults. Now, the key to reflective prayer is to invite participants to quiet themselves. And it usually helps them to get comfortable. Uh, I also like to invite them to 
take a little battery-operated tea light candle. I mentioned that before. Uh, take that with them the, when they look for their little place on the floor to sit and focus on that candle as a reminder of their baptism. I usually play some quiet music in the background, and then I lead them in some deep breathing. And then use their imaginations to enter into a place where they can talk to and listen to Jesus. We call this a guided reflection or a guided meditation, and kids really love this once they get the hang of it. But it takes some time because they often don't know how to be quiet. So we really need to be patient and persistent both with them and with yourself. Within a few weeks, if you keep working at this, I guarantee you it will become their favorite part of the class. Some catechetical programs like Finding God come equipped with guided reflections that you can lead, but there are also some resources available for leading guided reflections. Two of them are from Loyola Press called Guided Reflections for Children, Volumes 1 and 2, and I have also put together another PDF of resources for leading people of all ages in guided reflections. And you can download that from my blog immediately after this webinar. Now, if you're thinking, is that all he's going to say about leading guided reflections? Well, the answer is yes, because I have a whole webinar on leading prayer that I offered a few years ago, and we recorded it, and it is archived on my blog. Just go to Catechist Journey, and at the top of my home page, there's a tab labeled Webinars. When you click on that and scroll down, you'll find this webinar that you see on your screen titled Leading Prayer as a Catechist. Um, you can, the nice thing is you can watch that at your convenience in your pajamas while sipping a glass of wine or a margarita if you like. Well, finally, as you, begin, uh, as you began your class in a climate of prayer, so also should you end in a climate of prayer. And I recommend that you end your sessions with a brief prayer, inviting your participants to pray a, a traditional prayer, perhaps one that they should be learning during that year. So, for example, if the children are preparing for the sacrament of penance and reconciliation, it might be good to pray an act of contrition with them. Uh, for those preparing for confirmation, perhaps a Holy Spirit prayer, such as Come Holy Spirit, a good resource for a collection of traditional prayers is Catholic Prayers for Catholic Families, which comes with the Finding God program and is also available in a bilingual version. And finally, you can invite your participants to share a sign of peace before they leave. And then you can send them forth with a blessing. Just as parents can bless their children as they go to sleep, you can bless your participants by tracing the sign of the cross on their foreheads as they leave. And no one is ever too old to have that done. Another option uh, is simply to hold that bowl of holy water uh, that you were holding at the beginning of class and have them bless themselves on their way out, just as they did on their way in. But either way, by sending them forth with God's blessing, you're reminding them that they're going forth with God to live out their faith. 